This... All right, everyone. Masco and Geek number 163, the Fireside Chats. In this Fireside Chat, we're going to be talking comic books and uh, what we like about them, what we don't like about them, our origins of them, and uh, all things therein. Now, yeah, I got nothing else. That's it. That's my intro. So, um, hell of an all, intro. I know, right? It's always a good <laughs> intro. I like to keep them short and sweet. I know this particular topic got started because you, Robert, and you, Noble, were talking comic books on Twitter, mm -hmm. and I think Robert said, "Hey, we have to we have to make this a conversation." Mm -hmm. And Noble said, "Put it on the books." Mm -hmm. I was actually. Replied, Robert was actually replied, I'll the, talk to Masculine Geek, and there we go. It was actually a, a, a dig on Bitcoin, was this whole Twitter thread that I did, and somehow mm -hmm. it turned into a, um, a comic book discussion. So, oh, okay. I like how that segued from Bitcoin to comic books. Well, it, I was looking at the the comparison. So, like, Bitcoin was really good if you bought it, like, sometime before 2017. Hmm. You know, now you're now you're filthy rich. You know, you're living on a yacht or something like that. All right. But anybody buying it recently is like, you know, they're just riding this roller coaster of tension and, and they're not making as much money. And I'm saying you can't. And I, full disclosure, I don't own any crypto. I'm I'm not I'm not into it. I, it's not that I don't understand it. It's just that I just don't I don't care for it. Hmm. Um, but I don't hate it. But my observation was it's similar to <laughs> what I saw happening with comic books in the late 1980s in that I, my first comic book was, was like given to me by my, uh, my grandmother of all people. Mm -hmm. And it was this uh, reprint of the, the first appearance of the Wolverine in oh, Incredible nice. Hulk. But they had taken like all two or three issues that that happened in and they had put it in one book and, you know, republished like it. an omnibus or something. Yeah, but it was yeah. it was just a, it was still <clears throat> not a real big thing, and it was one of those dime store things, you know. And mm. and I just I remember getting it when I was visiting my grandmother in Florida, and then the whole drive back to Maryland, I read the crap out of it, wore the cover off, loved it, it was immediately nice. hooked. And then I discovered comic book shops, and it was like, oh, you have to put these things in plastic bags with cardboard backers, and you have to keep them, you know, upright, and the you know, like it was a whole thing. And they had all these comics on the walls that like, okay, if you want to buy, you know, action comics, number one, that's going to be like a million dollars. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to save my comic books because they're going to be worth a million dollars, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an idiot kid at the time. So I don't realize that what had happened is that since the, you know, the, I mean, action comics was like, what, 1930 something or another, you know, yep. it, 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 if you, people then didn't collect anything. You know, it was like you were just as likely to use a comic book to wipe your ass in the Great Depression as you were to save it. That's, so, that's, yeah, hence the, 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 the cheap pulp paper, yeah. Yeah, and so that's what made them rare. But by the 1980s, it's the same with baseball cards because I had a oh, cousin saturated, yeah. who, was, who was totally in the – I mean, he has he still has binders full of like every <clears throat> Topps baseball card edition. Like the, he would buy the entire set from <clears throat> like – the entire year and save it in a binder in pristine mint condition. And he has everything from like 1984 on until like 2000 or so. I think he finally stopped oh, sure. and he's got a few that might be worth a few bucks, but honestly, they just, they printed so many and there were so many dorks collecting them that, <laughs> that there's, I mean, even like Jose, it Canseco's, drew the value down. Yeah. Like you can get Jose. Like I had a Jose Canseco rookie card that he conned me out of. And Tell was, me, you didn't pay money for that. <laughs> no, I didn't. And I, I just I, I bought the packs, the wax packs that had bubble gum mm -hmm. in them. Yep. And I had a gold cup rookie for Jose Canseco. And I was like, oh, okay, good. I don't know who he is, but it sounds neat. And he's like, oh, I'll trade you like three of these other worthless pieces of shit for it. And then I get, you know, I get this card, you know, and then I realize like, okay, Jose Canseco is really good. Why did I do that? Mm -hmm. But now I look at it, it's like, it's not really worth anything anyway. Like, who cares? Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, they're right. all they're all worthless, you know, I mean, with a few exceptions, but most of them are, you know, the days of getting a million dollar comic book are gone, yeah. you know. And so if you the the analogy I was trying to make is like, yeah, Bitcoin was awesome if you bought it pre 2016 or so. But mm -hmm. now it's like you, you're just speculating like any other stock, you know, mm -hmm. 
And, and that's all I see it as. And so it's like, I would rather speculate on, on the stock market because I know a thing or two about some of these corporations. Mm. Whereas like crypto, I just see as like the minute the government gets involved, it's dead. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's, and that's where like, I don't want to be the, the last one standing in the musical chairs of that game. So, right. uh, but yeah, the comic book thing, like I, I had boxes and boxes and it was the typical story. I went to college and then my parents got rid of them and I cried for a minute and then it was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, for myself, I was never a huge, um, well, number, number one, number, comics was just whatever. I was more into reading books and D and D and shit. Yeah. Um, and the comics that I did get into were a little more esoteric. Uh, like, like I could tell you the ones that hundred bullets, which I'll describe in a minute. And then my parents got me after, uh, seeing, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've I've showed these before. Um, the triumvirate, the the movie tie-in. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nine, uh, November of 1981. Uh, I still have these. I need to get bags for them. <clears throat> One of my favorites is American Vampire, as well. That's a, a Stephen King and others. Mm -hmm. it's and David J. West would like this one. This is essentially um, how vampires got their start in the American wow. West. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of difficult considering it's nothing but sun. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's I, I'm into like slice of life kind of stuff, like superheroes that are really not superheroes, uh, pulpy kind of things, um, uh, adaptations like Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, things like that, Amber's Beers, um, Ghostbusters, the Star Wars, things like yeah, that. Yeah, some of my favorite ones are not the conventional ones. I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved the Simons and Thor and the Claremont X-Men run. Like I mm -hmm. was totally, I, I bought every one of those. I used to like the, uh, the Gruenwald um, Captain America run. One of my favorites. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was into the mainstream stuff, but um, there was, there was plenty of, I mean, who was this guy? He uh, wants to know who you are. They don't know who I am. You didn't watch uh, the Noble Brown episode. Okay, and, he's, okay. and he's, and he's playing D and D. What the fuck, Andrew? I know I'm, I'm nobody. Jesus, that's okay. Um, I, I like the anonymity, but but one of my right. favorites is is a series. It was a limited run series that, I, and, and you guys will blow my mind if, if any of you have heard of this. It was called Strike Force Moratory. Yes, yeah. I have all of them. No shit, Holy shit, that's awesome. <laughs> that is amazing. How good was that series? Right. It you it know? was it was very unique, especially for that time to have. Yeah. Here, here's a group of heroes. And they're all going to die. Get invested in them, and they're yeah. all going to die. They're all going to die. Like, 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 and they, they just spontaneously combust in the middle of nowhere. Like, yeah. Like, oh, this this guy's my favorite, and then boom, he's dead. Yeah, you know? that's if they don't die fighting the aliens. They were right. Like, they could die in combat, but dead. if they don't, yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's totally stupid. You know the mm -hmm. way they would die. It was just, mm -hmm. it was, it was so great, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I loved everything about it, and, and but it only ran for a limited time, and then it stopped. And when was yeah. this? Uh, this was uh, like about 80s. 1985, 86, right okay. now time yeah. frame. God, I, I loved it because it was one of those things where I picked it up because like, ooh, it's issue one. I'm gonna like have mm -hmm. the first issue. You know, like you think you're gonna have a valuable comic book, right? And then uh, so you buy issue number one because issue number ones were like rare in those days. Those were still kind of a thing. You know, it was just. You know, but but nowadays, like there's a number one, they reboot everything every five minutes. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's just, you know, mm, it's ridiculous. So, uh, but back then it was like, oh, here's an issue one of a new series. Let me get, let me check this out. And I loved it. And then I was like, wait a minute, these guys are going to die in a year. That's mm -hmm. kind of awesome. It's dark, but, you know, so, um, so yeah, I love that. And then, That's cool. but I also like the, the, the <clears throat> kind of like the what if type stuff, not necessarily what if proper, but like DC did one uh, for Superman with called red sun. Whereas like, mm -hmm. what if Superman was in communist Russia, you know? Oh, cool. And, and yeah. that's <laughs> <was> totally <laughs> else, else world <laughs> line. Yeah. And nice. I never really got into anything else along those lines necessarily, but I had that graphic novel for a while. And um, the funny story, I loaned it to my sister at the time who was a teacher at a school nearby and her students loved it so much that one of them stole it. <laughs> so nice. I was like, like, I don't even care. You know? <clears throat> like, you know, hopefully he, uh, he gets as much enjoyment out of it as I did. So, All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I like stuff like that. Um, 
There's a local one, uh, Michael San Giacomo. Uh, in fact, I knew the uh, the inker on this. Uh, the, it's kind of a dying art. I know it's, you're a tracer, but the inker for this one is uh, Phantom Jack. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Essentially, a, a journalist gets caught in a building, a, a lab. He's going to do an interview for somebody and winds up exploding. And he becomes essentially the invisible man. And it's about him struggling with that. And of course, you've got, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. Right on. And this one is pretty cool. This is a uh, Garth Ennis book, uh, Back to Brooklyn. Really dark and gritty and just kick ass. Yeah. Shit like that. I I will say I did get into Moon Knight for a while. I do yeah. have some uh, some issues of those. But it, that's about the extent of my uh, superhero comics. Oh, hey, Nick, you have to understand something. Porn comics never went away. Well, they're not yeah, mean. I, they're not mainstream, but porn comics are still alive and well. Yeah, uh, the, the cherry pop in multiple tart, nations was all we had back in those days. Yeah. Well, you've got dementia now with all kinds of. Well, he I, he doesn't. I think he's dead. But then there's like um, Milo Manara in Italy, mm-hmm. things of that nature. There's yeah. That's it's it, porn comics are alive and well. But I get what you're saying, Nick. That's you know. But there are several uh, Japanese manga artists who do regular um, shonen fighting series or adventure boys comic stuff, but they also do some adult stuff as well. Nice. And um, uh, Joji Manabe comes to mind. Some of it they do in limited release runs, uh, self-published for things like Comic Market in Japan. And other things actually get published as as book books, uh, ah, Tonkoban okay. size, which yeah, this yeah. would be an example of one of those. But uh, that's there's about, some serious fucking nerdery right here. This is awesome. That is <laughs> an older picture and is about sixty percent of my comic collection. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, you want to make sure that shit doesn't fall on you. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, that's, a, that's well, an older picture. I actually the, have that in a different vault now. So, nice. Um, do the milk crate challenge with that. There you go. Yeah, see how high you can stack them. But my uh, and that's and that's just for American comics. Obviously, mm-hmm. I've got various Japanese comics and then graphic novels and and other things in the uh, in various parts of this abode and and elsewhere. Okay. You yeah, know, it's I, like you, you, you see uh, the Avengers or whatever. And Nick Fury has like these, you know, stash houses of, <clears throat> of like weapons and stuff like that. And I have stash houses of, of, uh, comics. Comics. <laughs> so, not, and, nice. and, and, and other sort of geekery. I'm not so, on that uh, level. No. I, I, I remember Nick had talking about the, the dirty comics. The first time I discovered that was even a thing. I had um, I had bought a copy of this. I don't know if it was a limited series or what. Um, it's called Martial Law, hmm. and there were some there were boobies in it, and I was like, nice. "Whoa!" And 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 when I went to buy it, the guys like the guy at the comic book shop. He was pretty cool. <clears throat> he knew I wasn't really old enough for it. He's like, "You know, you're supposed to be 18 to buy this." I'm like, "Is it really that bad, or is it just bloody?" He's like, "No, there's tits in it." And I'm like, "They do that." Well, what's He's wrong like, with tits? Mm-hmm. But, and well, like I said, I'm like I'm like 12 at the time, you know what I mean? Like, uh, okay. Like I knew, but like you know, and so uh, and so he's like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, he's like, there's there's all kinds of like I got stuff in the back that like I can't even put out. Here. Like, are you <clears throat> kidding? Like it just, mm-hmm. you know, right? Okay, I've, I've a, discovered it's a something whole, new. It's a whole niche subculture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I <clears> that's I, like I the um, the, it's like the um, the erotic soft soft core porn pulps of the. Uh, 40s to the 70s yeah similar vibe I, I i ended up i ended up trying to sneak it through um uh what was it mile high comics had them mm-hmm. in stock and i would mail order them and then i just made sure i checked the mailbox before my parents did right yeah. seriously that's awesome yeah how about the, you, uh, how about you Robert? How'd, you get your, how'd you get your start uh my dad gave me a couple of comic books and uh i was just interested in art the big thing that helped was the fact that uh he was a big fan of conan the barbarian so when Mm -hmm. marvel had the original license which they've got the license again now to uh to do um 
Conan. They uh, he had a few of the comics, and he also picked up some. He really liked Fantastic Four, and he picked uh, up okay. a bunch of old Fantastic Four at a yard sale, probably hmm. for a dime. And we're talking issues like four through fifteen or twenty. Oh, shit. So most most of my older books are Silver Age Marvel. I've got mm. my Avengers run starts at number one. My Amazing Spider-Man starts at number seven. X-Men starts, I think, at like 10 or 11. Mm. Um, and then my Fantastic Four starts, starts at around <clears throat> four or five. I think that one doesn't even have a cover anymore, thanks to my younger brothers. But... Um, so that, that was my main focus, uh, as far as superhero books and then, uh, Conan the Barbarian. And then once, uh, they mm. started publishing Savage Sword of Conan, uh, definitely was drawn to that because thanks to the fact that it was a magazine sized book, it was not bound by the comic code authority. So it was able to publish a little bit mm. more mature, uh, content yeah and uh but yet it was like the same some of the same people so um you know you had like john basema doing artwork in it and then you had other guys like uh, ernie cho or chan depending on the where you look at his name and some others doing the artwork and it's just you know amazing amazing stuff so i've just yeah. i've just always had an interest in in this kind of stuff and so it was just something that uh i pursued as as time and finances uh permitted i was fortunate that uh i had a local neighborhood drugstore uh independently owned and the ladies there took a liking to me so when they would hmm. get their new comics in on a monday or tuesday whenever they're like shipment of everything came in uh you know i would usually come in and pick up books and what they would allow me to do is i would grab all the books i wanted which at the time was primarily marvel because there isn't enough money to buy everything you know mm. when you're a kid back in the day and this is when books are still you know 15 20 cents so we're not right. talking huge amounts compared to now where the average book is Four ninety nine <clears throat> for a That's single insane. issue of Batman, which is absolutely yeah. ridiculous since it's cr crap now. Um, but anyway, they'd let me uh, grab all of the uh, books that I wanted, stick them in a brown paper bag, and they'd hold them behind the uh, cash register until Friday when I either had, you know, snow shoveling money, lawn mowing money, paper route money, whatever. And then I'd come in that Friday, buy that, buy a couple cans of Dr. Pepper and maybe a couple candy bars. And my, my weekend was completely and totally set. Um, and by the time I got to about junior high, uh, it ended up leading to a job because they liked me so well. They were like, will you please come to work for us? And I'm like, yeah, sure, not a problem. So always looking nice. for another revenue source. And then uh, right. eventually I discovered comic book shops there's actually one here in town that had a mural painted on the side of the block building <clears throat> of uh of like a hobbit hole and a hobbit and some stormtroopers and some other stuff hmm. and uh never actually made it into the shop while it was still open but uh i i remember that mural really really well that's cool and uh speak speaking of hobbits what the what the yeah. fuck what the fuck happened to your head what do you mean it's like huge. You're like it's like right up in our face now. You well, on I'm your on phone? this. I'm on the phone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm down I'm at my girlfriend's to... place <laughs> in uh, down at my girlfriend's condo in Florida. Oh, okay, cool. How's the weather out there? Uh, it was nice today, man. 81 degrees. Fucking dick. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it topped out 71 today, so I can't complain too much. Yeah, that's not bad. <clears throat> no. So, what are you sipping? Uh, some really cheap bourbon and Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's completely ghetto. I love it. She well, drank up all night. Our, that's perfect for our talk because we're, we're, we are talking comic books and it's a bit ghetto. So um, tell me, did no, young Nick get involved in comics in any way, shape, or form? Well, first of all, the reason I'm drinking the cheap stuff is because she drank all my good stuff. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, so she's going to get a beating later on. Nice. As is appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I was in, I did read, I, I went through a comics phase when I was younger. Okay. You care to elaborate there, on there that, or is, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that is that is that it? <laughs> that's, it. That's, it. that's pretty much it. Well, I like well, that. well played, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> Who let Bert on the panel? <laughs> 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 Fucking Ernie. <laughs> hey, Bert. <laughs> Fucking Mick the best. You always count on Mick the best to give a zinger right in there. Shit, I aspire to Bert. Right? Who I you should be. Mick you Tubas. aspire to have a uh, a live-in boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> was, that's he, his girlfriend. He was a best. He was just a best friend. That's he was all. a good friend. Yeah. Okay. We can, you know, you can, you can have male friends. That's no. Yeah. Don't 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 gay up our childhood memories, you fucker. God damn it. <laughs> Hate that shit. But uh, yeah, I used to. Uh, so I, I I was into like Batman, and Superman, and all the usual stuff, and also Archie and Jughead. Oh, okay. You know, and I, I just it was pretty pedestrian because I basically inherited a bunch of boxes of comics from uh, a stepbrother I had back then, mm -hmm. and so I, I read through all those and kind of got mm -hmm. into that for a while. But then I discovered Mad Magazine and La National mm -hmm. Lampoon at an early age, and I kind of oh, yeah. switched over to that. And uh, and then I discovered that Playboy had comics in there, so I used to, you know. Oh yeah. My dad had a bunch of boxes of Playboy, so I used to go and and you know, in addition to looking at all the pictures, I would read all those comics they had. Because I had some pretty funny comic strips in there. It wasn't wasn't anything elaborate, but I know it's not. Yeah, what, yeah. It's not. Well, it's not exactly on topic for tonight, but. You know, well, it's comics are comics. Oh, what was it? Fanny Adams <laughs> was one of them. Or... Something. There was there was little Annie Fanny. Any little Annie Fanny. There you go. That's I it. I don't remember if that was because Hustler and uh, Penthouse had cartoons too. Mm -hmm. But I'm not I'm not here trying to hijack your discussion on the, you know, just make it totally degenerate. But that's kind of it's already it's, totally degenerate. I mean, always, the, it's always degenerate. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Noble, it's good to see you, man. Likewise. Um, I think the thing that fascinated me about I really liked uh, Superman because it had. I always liked the thing I liked about comics were all the things that would have like a bizarro world or you know, mm -hmm. some you know, uh, you know they would all of a sudden Robin would be a new you know there would be a new Robin he became Nightwing or something and all that kind mm -hmm. of shit. I was always I was more fascinated <clears throat> by like the construction of the of the story more so than just kind of the stories themselves. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting because that's how a lot of I think that's how a lot of dudes, you know, a lot of guys never read, you know, novels and all that stuff all that much when they were younger. But I knew almost every day I knew went through a comic book phase where they read a lot of comic books, and that's where they're that's where they did most of their reading. You know, hmm. that's true. It's very yeah. true. I yeah, remember when my uh, elementary school library would get in the new issues of like mad magazine and when really? we had library period on a given day you know i would usually be in there in that magazine periodical section <coughs> with the mad magazine with about you know the five or six guys that you know i played basketball with and other things in, in elementary school and we're all like mm. sitting around going through the mad magazine together um, and it was kind of a regular ritual. The funny part about that now is one of those guys is now a vice principal at my old high school. So I always, <laughs> oh, always, I always think that's kind of amusing because I knew him when he was also the guy who's, uh, <clears throat> I went over to his house to, to play basketball one afternoon and he's like, my brother just got this album. You've got to come listen to this. And I'm like, okay, he had an older brother. So we're in his older brother's room which was probably a death sentence for both of us because, you know, older teenage brother, but not like sure, right? younger ones in the room. And he dropped the needle on this album called Toys in the Attic by Aerosmith and the mm. opening track of Toys in the Attic. And I'm like, this is the most epic thing I've ever heard in my life. And, and you know, it was like brand new. And it's probably still one of my favorite Aerosmith <clears throat> albums, which 
none related to comic books, but there you have it. So yeah, I, I, I know the dirt on a vice principal at a local Indianapolis <laughs> high school. So there you go. Nice. Is, is Mad Magazine <laughs> considered a comic book? Uh, to a degree. I mean, it's in magazine form, so it's more of a periodical, but, um, it's all know, comic format. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's, you know, it's still that visual storytelling medium. And I would argue that mad old mad magazine, at least is probably still more uh, of a comic in the traditional <clears throat> sense of telling a story with sequential art than most modern comic books, which even the ones that look good, the art is static. You'll have like panel after panel of talking heads, maybe a splash page of, of uh, action, which is really just guys and gals in superheroic poses, and then back to panel after panel of talking heads. Where back in, you know, at least up into the 80s, um, be, be, before the, the Jim Lee's and Todd McFarlane's and stuff. And, and, you know, and, and McFarlane can do some sequential artwork, but, uh, you know, a lot of the old timers or what I considered the new guys back then, guys like George Perez, Mike Rell, Dave Cockrum and stuff. And, and certainly going back to, to Jack Kirby and others, yep. the artwork told the story, even yes. without the word yeah. balloons, the, the sequential art told the story. There it was, was all action, action oriented, in yeah. the illustration. Yep. And it's not like that now because you've got a bunch of guys who draw pinups. And and if you're lucky and have good art in a modern American <clears throat> comic book, that's what you're getting. Um, but that's kind of a rare thing to get, especially nowadays, because uh, not only are the companies not notoriously cheap, but they're not necessarily hiring the, the best and brightest to produce their product they're they're hiring people that check the right demographic boxes or have the right opinions on twitter yeah they're, they're hiring people to to push their narrative right and failing miserably if you look at the bottom <clears throat> line as far as where their numbers are oh marvel marvel doesn't exist for comics anymore mm -hmm. it, it, that, that's that that's so and it's come out of the, i forget that chick's fucking name mm -hmm. but she pretty much come out and said it's 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 uh, it's it's to push an ideology mm -hmm. we don't care about our, our our readers yeah it's to get the message out well you know the my message, the message is woke mm -hmm. my kids i tried a couple times not because i wanted them <clears> to <throat> but just to see if either one of them had an interest to you know to you know get my kids and see if my sons were interested in comics back when they were young they're in mm -hmm. their late 20s now but they never they were just never interested in it one of them one of them was a voracious reader mm -hmm. but i think that i think video games kind of took the especially when video games started having some kind of story <clears throat> some kind of story to them it wasn't mm -hmm. just you know get through fifteen thousand screens of pac-man or asteroids or centipede it was like you know, yeah. once once xbox came along and or even before that some of those other earlier games on you know, Nintendo playing, Nintendo playing Legend and, of Zelda and then Fables yeah, on Xbox and stuff Sega like that. Sega Genesis, yeah. you know, all mm -hmm. those, you know, I think, I think that probably being as interactive as it was, as well as having a story there, I think that probably captured a lot of kids' imagination. And I, I, I can attest to that. My son, all he, one of his favorite games is World of Warcraft because he likes the story, mm -hmm. you know, so he reads all yep. the novels and. The Sears catalog killed comic books. Hey man, don't knock the Sears catalog. Sears catalog was fucking awesome. But back in the day, yeah, it was. Used to wipe your oh, ass especially with that when shit. you got close to the holidays. Mm -hmm. The uh, it was called the 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 Sears Wish Book. Book. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. And all the GI Joe and fucking He Man and D and D toys and shit. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> they go for a pretty penny on eBay. I'll bet. Yep. Oh yeah. I think the last uh, Sears over here in the Morristown Mall closed up about two or three years ago. Mm. That was the end of it. It's done. It's the uh, yeah. end of the mall culture. But uh, yeah. we didn't have... I'm trying to think of comic book shops in the town I grew up in. We didn't really have a comic book shop in the town that I did. 
There were neighboring towns. Uh, we had a one of those spinning racks in the the uh, bookstores. That was about mm-hmm. it. So when that mall shut down, did you have to finally quit your job at Orange Julius and get a real job? <laughs> I did. Yes. Was that was that the real reason? Actually, the, the mall hasn't shut down. I just I just quit okay. Orange Julius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't work at a. You can't get older and work at a at Orange Julius for any length of time. Otherwise, you'll have hair like Bert. And uh, well, after. Yeah. <laughs> you were in after, the pool, weren't you, you fucker? After a while, no comment. After yeah, a while, okay. that's just yeah, he creepy. totally was. He was. One of my goals for this trip is to, you know, uh, get her to do something compromising in the pool while there are people around. So that takes that takes some, uh, you know, that takes some uh, maneuvering. She yeah, already drank that, all that the takes, good bourbon. That I mean, takes what more booze. does it take? And exactly. uh, when she drank all the bourbon, it should be a no-brainer for you to guide her into that. Uh, uh, yeah. I blame you, Nick, for not living up to I, your uh, leadership you're to- capabilities. You're totally right. It's totally yeah, it's total, all your fault. It's total like, failure on my part. Right. But that's, you know, I'm that's dying. why he's drinking cheap bourbon and diet coke. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and shame that, that he mixed himself. <laughs> try uh, yeah. try tequila. That works for me. Okay. There first of all, she made me this, and second of all, I knew I shouldn't have clicked on that. Invite link, <laughs> this thing. but I will say, and, uh, in in, def- in in my defense, I'm I'm here for a month, so I've got a month to do all. Oh, that, nice. So. Okay. Yeah. So you're all pacing right. yourself, is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. Well, nice. it's like you know, I'm not in any. Just like with everything else, I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> there you go. So you're freeloading for a month. I like it. Yeah, you could look at it that way. I guess I, I totally look at it that way, and that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Speaking, well, of, I mean, speaking of freeloading, where's your goddamn headphones? I keep forgetting. <laughs> Shit. Let me mute this at least. Um, I'll, I'll run and grab the headphones real quick. All right, cool. If it's... Is it really freeloading if somebody gets the honor of hosting me for any length of time? I'll no, 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 no. It's, it, I, it's when Aaron when Aaron couch surfs, surfs on his friend's couches, that's freeloading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, see, I you know I spring for good food and you know obviously good drink for her. So. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> but it's you know it's hard to find a. At least these days, it's not, you know I haven't found I haven't dated many women who uh, who drink drink whiskey. So. Oh, okay. Hold on. Already. I was wondering if he was going to finish that, or if he was just going to leave it at. I've not dated many women, so I wasn't sure where Nick was going with that. So. We all know. Yeah, we all know. I left, that's I left that case. one alone. I was <laughs> yeah. like, I'm gonna. I, I won't. It's just, yeah. We know. We know that's not the case. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's, it's, it's only one or two. It's, you know, it's my it's my stories that draw the people in. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, we'd like to thank Drew for joining us. Right. For showing us his gym. He's got to go take a call. So. Yeah. So. He has to see a man about a horse. No, it's about cool. a whore. A man about a whore. Um, yeah, now, as far as comic books now go now, <laughs> I I don't. I, I really indulge. Um, I'm not even a collector. Mm-hmm. I think the last one I bought was from... <sighs> Mike Mignola's um, uh, Hellboy, the okay. BPRD series. That's yeah. about it. I get into those. I love the artwork. Uh, Gabe, um, Gabriel, Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba, they're from South America. I think they're from Brazil. Mm-hmm. They put out a uh, a graphic novella called Day Trippers, which is really cool. But they also do um, Hellboy art. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I I like those and appreciate those, but those are the, that's probably it right now. <clears throat> I don't like I said I don't do the superhero stuff. That was never my thing. Yeah, um, I I I still will pick up old issues of like Batman and stuff, but that's mainly because you know he's probably one of my favorite Shadow ripoffs. So you're you're, you're, you're form. you are a collector though. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean I've got a pretty decent run of older Batman. Uh, from the late 60s through into the 70s so oh nice you know um, but uh, both both in Batman and detective comics and mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite DC heroes is actually a Fawcett character and that would be Captain Marvel jr 
Oh, okay. And that's probably my oldest <clears throat> comic is the first. So you're going back in Captain the Marvel. Bear. Yeah. Uh, Wiz Comics number 25, first appearance of Captain Marvel Jr. is probably the oldest comic I currently have in my collection. I had a Western that was older, but having younger siblings made keeping that a challenge, which is upsetting for several reasons, not least of which that it was given to me by uh, my late uh, great uncle. Um, But I I always liked uh, Captain Marvel better than Superman. So, and then I really like Captain Marvel Jr. because he was, he was a kid who, when he transformed, stayed a kid. Whereas Captain Marvel, uh, went from being Billy Batson, a young boy to being, you know, looking like an adult male. Uh, and then once I got a little bit older because of my interest in music and stuff, once I found out that, uh, Captain Marvel Jr., and Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel Jr. were like uh, Elvis Presley's favorites. And he obviously took a lot of uh, his style from from those characters. Uh, that just made them all the more uh, appealing to me as far as, uh, you know, uh, Superman type characters go. Um, but I also liked a lot of other things. Uh, Alien Legion was a book from the 80s that i really liked and it was basically exactly what it sounds like it's a far future and basically aliens and humans from all over the galaxy uh join basically a group of space legionnaires and fight in wars and for you know a a confederacy or alliance of star systems and stuff like that and uh it was very hardcore military sci-fi in comic form and uh was really really good and you had characters that died the artwork was really nicely done in it and uh and then of course uh later uh some uh a more recent thing would be the uh, parker series uh starting with the hunter that uh based on the richard stark novels that uh, yeah. uh darwin cook did trades for in fact i sent uh, a link to that in uh, in our chat um as a as a recommendation to to vince and to noble um but that that's been turned into two different movies one with lee marvin and then the most well one of the most recent uh uh would be the mel gibson movie payback and then there's also a more recent version that i guess jason statham or someone like that did yeah. but uh <clears throat> but I enjoyed payback both edits of that movie but I, I just because the story is so so good but Parker's a really cool uh, noirish sort of uh, <clears throat> bad guy so and uh, and, I, and Darwin Cook's art is just perfect for it because he draws and, and sadly he's he's passed away but he draws mm-hmm. in that uh, older style so i actually have that both in the soft covers the hard covers and this really nice deluxe martini edition because i'm just i am a collector it's what i do well you know something i got into recently was um about a year and a half ago i guess it was (laughs) i i talked to a friend um who I went to, we went to high school together, but he was a few years ahead of me and, uh, he actually dated my stepsister for a while. And then, uh, and so we were connected on Facebook a a little while back and it turned out that he is a, um, he's an an illustrator, a color guy for comics. And so he's worked for Marvel DC and, and some of the other smaller and independent houses um as the color guy so he was explaining how you know that stuff gets drawn and done and what i didn't realize was that you know a lot of you know they'll have you know somebody writes a story somebody draws the panels and then he colors it in inking yeah yeah. he inks it in and so we did a live stream with him and a guy that he worked on a new graphic novel with called pulp which is a it's it's a it's kind of a half noir, half kind of military intelligence thing set during World War II in the Pacific Northwest, 
and uh, it came out about a year and a half ago, and it was really interesting. Um, and I got so I bought a copy of the of the graphic novel and read it because I really hadn't been in, you know had any interest in that stuff for for a very long time. And uh, yeah, and that that was actually really good. The art in it's really good. The story's really good. Um, everything about it was was really cool. And so he and he came on the live stream, and he also invited the author of Pulp to come on the live stream. We just chatted about you know the state of all that stuff now and you know what they did you know how they how they work together and who all was involved you know what it's like having to publish that independently because i think they published it independently and uh yeah. so that was all pretty interesting you know it, you know it's kind of it, that stuff kind of comes full circle because you know that the seed was planted you know back when i was younger and then you know, I kind of drifted away from stuff like superheroes, especially after, you know, after all the superhero movies in the last 20 years, to be honest with you. You know, I watched all that stuff with the kids and, and I got I just kind of got burned down on it just because most of the stories sucked and it was all woke shit. And, you know, who cares? But then, you know, I discovered this thing and kind of got me back, you know, interested in that again. So that's cool. Um, yeah. 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 I just, um, yeah. I just dropped the screen cap in the Twitter DM thing, but also uh, just about to share it. Yeah, you're talking about Elvis being a fan of Captain Marvel Junior. I as soon as you said, it, I was like, oh, they they showed that in the trailer for this movie that's coming out hmm. about Elvis. Nice. So, yep, there it is. Yeah, you might get kicked <coughs> out of that. Oh, definitely. Then you go in, then you drop the uh, actual trailer for it. Yeah, I was actually over at a girl's house when I heard that Elvis had died. Oh, in fact, shit. it was a girl who, back in the eighties. Yeah, well, no, back in the seventies or seventy. I thought he died yeah. in like seventy eight, like you know, towards eighties. No, well, it was toward the eighties, but it, it okay. was in it was in seventy seven, seventy eight. Yeah, mm. so I was over to the actually, and she was the first girl who took her top and undid her pants for me so <clears throat> special nice. memories of that girl <laughs> right oh, let's see what this is <laughs> there are some who make me out to be the villain of this here story let's don't let a good thing die <laughs> Are you ah, that's to fun. Destiny? <laughs> or does it just come knocking at your door? He's a young singer from Memphis, Tennessee. Give him a warm hayride welcome. <laughs> Mr. Elvis Presley. Hmm. Get a haircut, buttercup. In that moment. Captain Marvel Jr. haircut. That's right. Into a superhero. Right in the fucking swimsuit area. He was my destiny. My density. I wish to promote you, Mr. Preston. Going to a party in the town of jail. Are you ready to fly? I'm ready. Ready to fly. Tomorrow, all of America will be talking about Elvis Presley. I can't move, I can't sing. Some people want to put me in jail. The whales move it. They might put me in jail for walking across the street, but you're a famous white boy. The way you sing is God given, so there can't be nothing wrong with it. Martin Luther King has been shot to death in Memphis. That's all right for you. Tragedy, but it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with us. Oh, my Lord, my boy. Hey, Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. yep. As Colonel Tom Parker. Whoever yeah. most told me when things are too dangerous to say. Note the lightning bolt. Hey. Yep. Uh, before the show, and nobody's gonna remember me. The fuck? 
I need to get back to who I really am. <clears throat> and who are you, Alice? I just gotta be making the most of this thing while I can. This can all be over in a flash. We are the same, you and I. We are two odd, lonely children reaching for eternity. The greatest show on earth. Looks pretty cool. Elvis has left the building. Nah, that might be worth the look. You guys remember <coughs> the uh, Elvis Presley biography? Starring uh, Kurt Russell that John Carpenter directed. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I never cool. saw that one. It is it is actually pretty good. If I remember correctly, he even has the uh, incident where Elvis is in a hotel room and shoots out the television with his revolver. <laughs> but uh, Kurt Bull Russell... Hotep is the original Hotep, yes. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> Kurt Russell did a hell of a job as, as Elvis. And has actually done Elvis a couple of <clears throat> times because even more recently where he did a uh a holiday movie where he was uh santa claus he ends up getting arrested <laughs> and in the jail he basically does a an elvis number uh musical number in the jail and mm. uh and it's he just and what was it Le not leaving las vegas um thousand miles to graceland or something like that with mm. uh, kevin costner and kurt russell where they're they're a group of like elvis impersonators who like rob casinos in vegas and then yeah so <clears throat> cool kurt russell was a pretty good actor and does Still a heck is. of an elvis um i'm gonna shift this back to comics i forgot about these two which are kind of cool these are over 10 years old now um this was the Mice Templar. Yes. Uh, this is um, Mike Oming and I forget Glass, his first name, but these are, I got these signed by them. This is the first first copy of volume one. It was cool. Were it's they at like, a convention or was it a, <clears throat> I mean, a local shop or something? Vince? It was at yeah. a, a local shop, but uh, my friend, the comic book inker, got this for me because he was friends with them. Oh, and he was, awesome. he was working on a project with them at the same time. And then this one is a Warren Ellis Ignition City. Yeah. This is a sort of a dystopian space kind of cool thing. It's very steampunkish, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which I enjoyed very much. Um, very eclectic, offbeat shit. So cool. That's usually my jam. But like I said, nothing new lately. Um, 100 bolts did i already talk about 100 bolts to the to the audience i know i showed you guys yeah you hadn't you hadn't talked it over <clears> to <throat> the audience yet so. oh, okay right, let me bring that up 100 bolts so this one let me fucking grab the goddamn thing it's all did i put it all in the fucking box? i did it's on the bottom of the goddamn pile so 100 bolts mm -hmm. uh brian azarello and eduardo riso this one is cool it's uh it essentially it's a series uh, this is a graphic novel. This comprises either three or four of the the, the uh, comic books and an omnibus. This is essentially a uh, a federal agency flying under the radar and acting of their own accord uh, finds people that have been wronged or down on their luck. And one of the agents comes up to them in a very clandestine location and manner uh, and says, hands him a briefcase and says, uh, you open it up and inside, take a look. And inside there is a uh, hundred bullets and a gun and fundamentally tells them to take care of business. You, you have a license to kill. Um, and they can exact retribution or revenge. Uh, there's plots upon plots and uh, a lot of interwoven stories. It's, 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 I'm surprised it hasn't been made into a movie. It sounds like it should be an episode of the Twilight Zone. Right? It's a, Yeah, exactly. It's that good. So I suggest you... Uh, let me get the year on this. This is another one that's over a decade old. Um, I suggest pick it up. 2011. 
2011. There you go. Um, this I've one. I've got it up here now. <laughs> well, actually, this one is originally published in single magazine form as 100 Bullets, 1 through 5, Vertigo, Winter's Edge 3, copyright 1999. Oh, even older. <clears throat> yeah. This one in particular that I have in my hand is from 2000. So we're talking 22 years and then 99, it's 30 years. <clears throat> so that it's worth your time. Yeah. They, it's a very good read. They, they publish and republish those trades periodically. Sometimes they, they repackage them a little bit or do new covers, but uh, yeah, they've reprinted this one. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, all right. We're coming up on the hour mark. I wanted to keep this one short because I'm not feeling that great and I've got two hours of sleep. So, and I know Noble Brown's got a lot going on and Robert's got a lot going on as well. So, Always. are there any questions from the chat regarding comics or our involvement in them or any recommendations? We'll take questions for the next 10 minutes. Do you have any, any of your other comics autographed, Vince? <clears throat> um, uh, let me think. Uh, the ones that I have here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I have Phantom Jack autographed. <clears throat> I don't, which is weird. I have um, the writer. Michael San Giacomo did something called the Starlight Drive-In, mm -hmm. which... Uh, showcased the drive-in movie theaters uh, across the nation and like little plots and <laughs> uh, slices of life, snapshots of life surrounding drive-ins. Yeah. Uh, at that time, and I that I have signed. <clears throat> so I have a Michael Sangiacomo. I've got the uh, the the um, Mike Omig, the Mice Templar. Mm -hmm. um, I have Ed. <sighs> I wanted to get this Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips Incognito. Mm -hmm. I want to get this signed. This is a good one. And this Garth Ennis, uh, the Back to Brooklyn, I was hoping to get signed, but I didn't get a chance. <clears throat> they come sometimes come out to uh, local conventions. That's about yeah. it. Um, yeah, back in the day, yeah. they used to. It used to be a lot easier to get stuff <clears throat> autographed. I've got uh, a bunch of uh, Warlords and Green Arrow Longbow Hunters and some other stuff autographed by Mike Grell. I had my original run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles autographed by Eastman and Laird. And oh, the that's first awesome. two trades actually have sketches. The first volume has a sketch by Laird and is autographed by both of them. And the second one has a sketch by Eastman and Laird of a turtle and is autographed by both of them. <laughs> that's cool. My run of uh, John Byrne X-Men <laughs> are autographed by John Byrne. My... Uh, I've got Roy Thomas to autograph the first few uh, issues of Conan the Barbarian from the Marvel run, as well as uh, the uh, first few issues of the Marvel adaptation of Star Wars and some other odds and ends. Uh, Jerry Ordway autographed a bunch of Superman. When they did the relaunch of Superman with John Byrne, I got him to autograph those. Uh, John Byrne also autographed my Space 1999 comic book by uh, oh, Charlton, no shit. I think it was. Yeah, oh, awesome. which which he was not happy about. He was, it was <laughs> no? right after it was right after the relaunch of Superman. He had had his huge successful run on X Men, so he was basically uh, this was at a Mid Ohio Comic Con. Hmm. He was basically the queen of the ball. He was the only guy there charging hmm. the outrageous sum of like one dollar for every ten books he autographed. That's nothing. Exactly. But at the time when they? no one, whenever, when all the other artists and writers were autographing for free, it was mm. just, it was, it was kind of like, you know, you're blasphemy. Yeah. And, um, but anyway, he was, he was, he was very, uh, very short. And, you know, I, the guy obviously, you, you know, had huge lines and everything else. So I, you know, I don't want to give him too much grief, but he was, he was definitely the bell of the ball and was definitely feeling his own ego. And poor Jerry Ordway, who I think does a better Superman anyway, was sitting right next to him and eventually just out of was shamed into putting up like a tip jar or something like that. Um, but anyway, so he'd signed all my X-Men. He'd signed all my Superman from the run <coughs> he, he was actively doing at that time. Mm. And then the last thing I had him to sign at the bottom of, the, of a stack of like 10 books was a couple of Space 1999 comics. And he like came That's to a awesome. dead stop. 
you know what? Pen down and flip through it. Like, where did you get these? And it's like, That's oh, my great. local can comic you explain, shop. Can you explain a space? And I, I know what it is, but can you explain Space 1999 to the viewers? Uh, Space 1999 was a <laughs> 70s uh, Jerry Anderson, uh, the guy who did Thunderbirds and, and stuff like that, UFO, uh, sci-fi drama, where in the year 1999, uh, the nuclear fuel waste dumps on the far side of the moon, there is a catastrophic accident where they explode and the force of the explosion is so tremendous that it hurls the moon out of Earth's orbit, taking <clears throat> moon base Alpha and all of the inhabitants therein with them. And as the moon flies throughout the galaxy, miraculously not being pulled into a geosynchronous orbit with some body with a sufficient gravity hmm. well to do so uh they encounter all kinds of different aliens and uh some human explorers and some other uh so it's basically star trek without, without the communism yeah it's okay. uh it, it it's a very unique series uh that has some very diehard fans uh, i as a matter of fact have a bunch of patches from space in 1999 for a jacket that i'm supposed to be working on so anyway so yeah it's just one yeah well robert doing all this name dropping i suppose i should tell the story of uh how i got to interview todd mcfarland once back in the late 90s oh cool oh, cool yeah he lives here in in well at least he did i don't know if he still does he lives mm -hmm. in um, awatiki which is a borough of phoenix right and in the late 90s i had designs on on being a uh a, a writer full time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, now I just do novels in my spare time and so forth. But there was this uh, local magazine that was, you know, trying to be the hip and cool thing in the late nineties. It's called City AZ. It's defunct now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're like, they're they were they were looking for local celebrities slash businessmen, movers and shakers to interview. And I pitched the idea. Because I was like a comic book dork, right? Like Todd McFarlane. Like, I know he lives in my neighborhood. Can I find an excuse to interview him? So I pitched the mm -hmm. story. And they said, yeah, we'll give you the credential to do it. And uh, sure enough, he took the interview. And it was right around the time he had um, he had a couple of big deals going at the time that were totally not comic book related. Hmm. He, had, um, he had just illustrated the first Pearl Jam video that Pearl Jam had done. Oh, since sure. their inaugural album they they i guess eddie vetter and company being the hipster douchebags that they are they, they wouldn't do music videos after their first album they just mm -hmm. they hated doing it um all they do is they sell you 17 live albums of their latest concert and mm -hmm. you know, cash in on that but so he had illustrated uh uh video for this track they did called do the evolution i don't think it ever took off but it was a neat video oh. and then um so he, I got to see that before anybody else did because he had like the final cut ready to go to MTV. Nice. And uh, this guy has this office on top of his garage there. Mm -hmm. And he's a total baseball nut. Like he was playing yeah. in amateur hardball leagues around town, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he has like he had this glass case because he, he has two things that he fetishizes that you would not expect from a comic book guy. Well, maybe the baseball wasn't so much mm -hmm. you wouldn't expect, but he was also really into Madonna. And so he had Madonna's uniform from a league of their own. Cause it was like the perfect convergence oh, of the mm -hmm. two things that he was obsessed with. Yeah. Um, so he had that like in a glass case and then right next to it, he had a set of Babe Ruth's cleats. Mm -hmm. you oh, know? Shit. And then he just, he had just, um, I didn't know it at the time, mm -hmm. but like five minutes later it came out that he bought the, home run ball from Mark McGuire from that year when um, yeah. McGuire and Sammy Sosa and Sammy Sosa were having the home run mm -hmm. chase. And then they, yeah. you know, they voided all that cause they were all ju juiced up on steroids, but whatever. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I got to talk to him about all of that except for the baseball thing. Um, yeah. He dropped some serious money on that. He did. Baseball. And, then, and then I thought I, I, I called him up afterwards. I was like, okay, you didn't tell me about this. What's the deal? Like, I'd like mm -hmm. to get this in the story. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, we're thinking of using it as a promotional thing. You know, we'll, we'll, cause they were starting to make toys of mm -hmm. like baseball players, you know, like mm -hmm. action figures. Yep. He's like, so this is going to be the I thing that promotes that, yeah. that. 
And so, uh, so his <clears> toy <throat> company was ended up, I think he probably ended up making more money with his toy company than he did with, yep. with his comic books. Um, but yeah, so that was a thing. And mm-hmm. he, he was an interesting cat. He was totally cool though. Like 100%, you know, just, I mean, I was nobody. It wasn't like I was coming from the New York times. I was just some <clears throat> kid from a local magazine. And he, he gave me like two hours of time just to talk and show me all this stuff. That's cool. Yeah, I've heard mixed things about him. So, but I, he's someone I've, he's a character I've never met, but I've got, I mean, I've got his run on Spider Man. I've got, it was so good. In, incredible Hulks. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, I've got his spawns and I still have spawn, yeah. his uh, first few spawn figures, the, the spawn, medieval spawn. Uh, I've still got a set of those carded as well as a set open. Yeah. Because yeah, I am. It's he amazing. Was... I have sex with women <laughs> with all this stuff. I live like a rich twelve-year-old, yeah, and yeah, that that answers the question. How do you get the yeah. girls? Don't don't do what we're talking about here. It's yeah, not going right. to help at all. At all. Nope. This is like a handicap. This is we're we're playing on hard mode. Yeah, we are yeah, definitely exactly. playing on hard mode. But, <clears throat> but hey, but you know, it it, it can be done. It, it can be done, but uh, uh-huh. I don't recommend it. Yeah. Nope. Definitely not. Or if you do watch the movie Free Enterprise and watch the uh, the scene where the woman's in the bedroom with the guy and wanting to know why he lives like a rich twelve year old because he's surrounded by his Mego action figures and so on and so forth. Which, by the way, Free Enterprise based on a true story, so hmm. bit no, of got, a cult classic. Check that, it out. That's, that's two movies you've recommended: the nineteen seventy nine, which that Kurt Russell movie was made for television, by the way. I yes, don't think yes, find it was. That. And now Free Enterprise. Yeah, Who's free enterprise. That? Robert cool. Meyer Burnett. Uh, it's it's about him and a buddy of his. And, 1998. Uh, yeah, starring William, William Shatner, Shatner as William this. Shatner. Yes. That's worth oh, it right shit. there. Yeah, I'm there. Sign me up. Yeah. Nice. Fucking William Shatner. Yeah, anything with William Shatner. Right. Why does this look like the logo for uh, Galaxy Quest on this movie poster here? It actually predates Galaxy Quest. So. Right. Galaxy Quest was amazing. So, yes, it was. Galaxy Quest is probably the best Star Trek movie to come out in the last twenty years. It is. I mean, it's like the best Star Trek movie since Wrath of Khan. Yeah, the original right. one. Khan. Yeah, it's good stuff. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So I yeah, so... find that. How do I? How do I know these things? Oh, okay. Hang on. That's crazy. Share, share screen, audio. Are we going to do a trailer watch? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, no. where are you at? The fuck is this goddamn fucking ads? Come on, ads. <clears throat> Story of my life, people, except I didn't live in since Hollywood. Since Mark was a boy, and since Robert was a boy, they've worshipped one man. The Lawrence Olivier of the Airways. What are you doing here? I'm one of the top ten imaginary friends kids have, just behind John Cooper, <laughs> Reggie Jackson, and Farrah Fawcett Majors. But, oh my God, they're about to discover. Don't make a big scene. Mr. Shatner, I would like to say that I think you are the greatest American actor ever. I'm a Canadian. That their lifelong hero... I've got an idea. ...is definitely not of this world. It's a musical version of Julius Caesar. (sighs) I want to do a complete text. Well, I'll I'll play Julius Caesar and all the other parts, too. The man I idolized since I was two (coughs) turns out to be a raving loon. Ouch. And now... My lady friend. She loved me. How can that be? I mean, <laughs> he's going to the lead them. How cool is that? On a voyage. Oh my! To find love, guys, you gotta mix a little reality in with your imagination. That's way stranger than science fiction. I'm not the one with the green girl sex fantasy. Oh my! Did you see the way that she was peeping you? I don't believe it. I just met the most fantastic female, Claire. You should be happy. For when Spock got infected by the spores and fell in love with Leela Colomi, he was happy too. But Kirk right. fought him, made him resist. Yeah, whatever. 
<clears throat> who do you see starring in it? Rafer Weigel, Eric McCormick, Audie England, That's fun. Patrick Van Horn, Phil Lamar, and William Shatner. And that Dr. Spock guy with those pointy ears. As Bill. Yeah. You can call me Mr. Shatner now. No tears for season. Yeah. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bow. No one will ever believe this. Free Enterprise. <laughs> this looks pretty good. Love Long. <coughs> and I've never heard about it. Yes, with the captain. How have I not seen this? Right? Seriously. I lived it. I, I live my own version of that, but instead of working in Hollywood, I was working in radio here That's in the Midwest. Fucking awesome! But thank you, for the bedroom, thank you for talking about Doctor Spock and toys while she's walking around in her bra and panties. Yeah, been there, done that. Wow. Nice. In fact, I even got some pictures, which That's I'm cool. not sharing here. What? Uh, you ma- share them privately, ma- you fucking dick. <laughs> privately, in the masculine geek. Fortress of Solitude. So if you're a member, it has perks. Masco and Geek That Life. That's right. We'll be so. uh, on March 26th, Saturday, 2 p.m. Okay. It's not on Netflix. <laughs> you got to buy it off Amazon. I'm going to have to buy it. That's it's incredible. A, it's a shame I threw my TV out. I don't, I don't have a subscription service or anything like that, except for I think I get Netflix free with my T-Mobile. So... That's crazy. That's awesome. But love there it. you go. <clears throat> go uh, Bacon, I don't know if you've ever watched the original Battlestar Galactica from the 70s. Go that was so good. I yeah, love that. Fucking love go back original. with uh, Dirk Benedict. As, Dirk uh, Benedict. Was yeah, fucking Dirk Benedict. Man. He's a ba- he, re- he wrote a really good essay about uh, masculinity. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Back that, oh yeah. I, let me see. The if I can Tales find of it. a Kamikaze Cowboy. <clears throat> yeah. Link that. Yeah. Let me let me go link that now. Um, I used to love Dirk Benedict in both Battlestar Galacta and then A Team. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, who didn't want to be Dirk Benedict back in the eighties? Right. Seriously. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like a a really it's up there with Han Solo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically. <clears throat> And unlike Han Solo, Starbuck never died like a chump. Right. Which is more than we can say for what happened to poor Han Solo. Uh, don't give me what started. was the name of the article, uh, Robert? His book is like Tales of a Kamikaze Cowboy or something like that. Yeah, I've got he, his novel. Uh, and then but But he's got it, that he's got that essay on um masculinity. He does, yeah. Shit, hang on. God damn it. <clears throat> Lost in ca- no, it's, is that yeah, lost in castration. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me go. There we go. Oh, they, they put it up on Breitbart. Holy shit! <clears throat> Starbuck, yeah. So it's called Lost in Castration. And it's done by Dirk Benedict, who played Starbuck in the original Battlestar Galactica series. So go watch this and go read it. Let me uh, see if I can find the original article. Ah, here we go. Dirk Benedict Central. Full version, Lost in Castration. It's not terribly long. If James was here, I'd have him read it, but that fucker's not. So let me uh, let me add the link. Let me share this out. Share a screen. I'll also link it in the uh, in the chat. So there you go. Go read this. It's very good. I came across it about five or six years ago. Nice. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, like I said, it's not long. Let's see. 
Do 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 do. So you've got a house full of kids, Noble. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing uh, World of Warcraft PvP as soon as I get off here. Oh, awesome! Nice. That's kind of cool. You know, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. I'm not very good. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never played. I've actually never played. Yeah. Well, if you do, let me know. I'll uh, right. I'll, I'll hold your hand. That <laughs> oh <laughs> god, hold my hand. That'd be kind of cool because I I play um. I played Diablo three. That's the same company that uh, yep. makes the Blizzard. Mm-hmm. So I could just easily just download and sign up for WoW. Yeah, and you can <clears> play <throat> for free up to level twenty. So like, oh, it might be cool just to play for free for a little bit. Yeah, would we I can't... Be, would we make our own guild? The the MG guild? Would we be horde or alliance? We should to- yeah. we're uh, totally horde. Yeah. Uh, I don't play any horde. I, I can't help you if you're horde. I play. I've been played in the alliance for fifteen years. It seems. Come like, on, so. man. I'm sorry. We're, pl- we're playing MG Horde. For fuck's you know, you know sake. what? You, uh, hey, whatever you want to do is fine. I'm just letting you know. Like the only reason why I played Alliance is because I didn't have low self esteem and I didn't want an ugly avatar. <laughs> low <laughs> self esteem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nobody believes that shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, all I'm saying is that is that you know <laughs> my characters are all very pretty. Oh Christ. <laughs> 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 I'm just glad that this time when we got Noble on the show, he's not getting flashed off camera. Uh, that can't happen right now. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the kids yeah, there, it's there's like children nearby. you're yeah, you're, you're yeah. not nearly as distracted as you were last time we no, were talking. No. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I saw that come across the the, the Twitter DM, I'm like, oh, that's that. I I had a feeling he was distracted somehow, and I couldn't figure yeah. out what it was because you kept. I could see the light change, and you're looking over. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, you give like this sort of like small, minute smirk, and then you look mm-hmm. over, and you mm-hmm. talk seriously, and you look over. I'm like, what the fuck is that guy doing? Yeah, he's looking at fucking tits, is what he's doing. Okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I can't we? We're not blaming you at all. That's no, no, no blame at all. Behave on a masculine geek episode. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, one of these days, I'll uh, I'll get her to <clears throat> nice. We're gonna have a um, we're gonna have a masculine geek meetup in in, in Noble's backyard. Please do. Yes, we're Seriously, coming out. I've got, I've got plenty of space. <clears throat> awesome. We'll set up tents and shit. We'll sleep out. Yeah. That'd be fucking fantastic. Well, I've got a couple of guest rooms. You know. <clears throat> okay. Cool. I'm totally. Uh, totally we'll sleep out with the scorpions. <laughs> that's true. The scorpions. Got to be careful. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's on my list to do. She she literally texted me while I'm on this. She's like, "When you're done, you need to do." do scorpion check because she found one in the pool so i'm like all right oh shit now i go out there with a black light and a blowtorch it's great that's fucking <laughs> awesome it is it's badass <laughs> that's gotta be fun you get rattlesnakes too uh i haven't seen too many here when i used to live on the west side we'd get them periodically but not not i'm in the sit in the middle of the city now so it's oh like okay gotcha so do you ever throw on like the soundtrack to aliens while you're out there doing your bug hunt with the flamethrower <laughs> no but i should <laughs> We we get a random text from Noble saying "Game over, man! Game over!" Well, right? <laughs> well, we'll know the scorpions got the better of him. Nah, you know what's I've, funny? I've been, yeah. I've been stung by him before. I mean, it it'll that hurt sucks. for like three days. Mm-hmm. Like it just it just makes you this this numb pain. So we mm-hmm. had one that got in the house, and I I thought I was being smart, squashing it with a napkin, and it still got through. And yeah, yeah. So light him on fire or step on him with the fully soled shoes. Mm-hmm. Don't use your hand. This is uh, let me let me uh, actually show this up again. Um, I was going I was just quickly scanning through the uh, lost in castration, mm-hmm. and this is this goes back to two thousand and four. I guess he, he he lasted a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, he's talking about the best minds in the in the world of unimagination doubled their intake of double soy latte. So he was talking about that shit back then. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> he was ahead of the curve. <laughs> He's totally ahead of the time. Yep. Damn. I, I mean, I I always liked him, but like that newfound respect. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think this was written by him, but it was about it's about his 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 um his take on masculinity. Mm-hmm. So. Actually, no. It says Dirk Benedict writing in Dreamwatch, yeah, made yeah, in 2004. Yeah. yeah, 
All right, cool. I didn't think he lasted that long because I know he had cancer and he was on this like intense macrobiotic diet and beat yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> it was like a big thing for a while. <laughs> Village. That, that's what we'll probably call it, is Village by the Tits. <laughs> Village by the Breasts. <clears throat> so how far away from Winslow, Arizona, are you, Noble? And have you ever uh, stood on a corner there? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So the Miracle Mile. Winslow, Arizona is a complete piece of shit town. Mm-hmm. And, and there's nothing to see there. There's there's the one corner where yeah. they have all the swag. And there's a, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a shop that has all the, the trashy souvenirs. And the right. rest of the town is, is just completely dead. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to live there. You don't even want to visit, honestly. You want what you want to do is you want to be driving by on I-40. You mm-hmm. want to stop for five minutes. You don't even want to have a cup of coffee in that town. You want to take your picture, right. post it on your Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, listen to the Eagles for five minutes and then leave. So literally the best thing to ever happen to Winslow, Arizona is an eagle cruise through yeah. there once. Yeah. It's just it, it, I mean, I was so we actually took the kids up there last year to like, let's go see the meteor crater and let's go mm-hmm. see Winslow, Arizona. And it was like the biggest disappointment in the history of disappointments. Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> um, it says here, by the way, that mm. Dirk Benedict is still alive. Yeah. Wait, what? I thought he was dead. No, he's well, still that's alive. Why when he's you said that, I was like, still hey, alive? Yeah, oh, fuck. Dirk Benedict died? <laughs> yeah. No, he's oh. 77 years old. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I saw hush him in my mouth and just a couple of years Sally. ago. Holy shit. All right. I, I, now, I, I, Richard I, I Hatch, assumed. Richard Hatch is dead. Richard Hatch, who played Apollo in the original... Maybe I'm also thinking had of that cancer, fucker. and he did pass away. What the okay. hell is it? Battlestar Galactic is dangerous. No, it said it said he had prostate cancer. Yes, yeah. and he yes. beat it. And, uh, and he did macrobiotic diet, mm-hmm. and, and he beat he, that shit. He beat his prostate cancer with that. Yeah, he yes. had this, this. But Richard Hatch is also also okay. had cancer, although I can't remember which type. It was fairly aggressive, and in the you know, in like the year that it was announced that he had it, he was he was gone. So yeah, um, so that's probably huh. who maybe I should reach out events. to Dirk Benedict and get his ass on here, dude. <coughs> his publicity that would be amazing. Would yeah. that be great to have Dirk Benedict on here? Oh my god, I would lose my shit. I I, I mm. sent out my uh, my email to uh, John Norman, John Lange for uh, talking about Gore oh, and having him on. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna. <clears throat> I'm gonna have him on. I'm gonna see if he'll do live. If he won't, if he'll do a recorded one, and it depends on his comfort level. Oh, so. definitely. Well, I mean, <clears throat> obviously, he's not a young man. Uh, you he's know, in his eighties now. Yeah. So, yeah. um, but just to have him, and if it's one of those things, Vince, where it has to be a a just a one on one, by all means, go forward with it, man. Make it happen because oh, that's, absolutely, yeah. You know, because. As much as I would love to be a part of that, I well, I will be just as happy to to watch it if you can facilitate it with what works best best with him. Well, absolutely. I'll I'll have I'll do two. I'm going to I'll offer him up. Um, obviously, all all of us live. Mm-hmm. That's our our basic format, either Wednesday or Saturday. Mm-hmm. Or if he wants to do a private our private fortress Zoom, if he's more comfortable mm-hmm. with that, I'm fine with that too. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> So, but which I'll would know. be another reason to join Masculine Geek Life? People. You're right, exactly. Yeah. And if you don't but, know who John Norman is, he's the writer of the Gore series from the 70s and 80s, and still writes to this day. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> yep. Boris Vallejo is the uh, cover artist for those books. <clears throat> so, cool, very cool. All right, gentlemen, it's an hour and 20 minutes. We're well over the hour mark, and this has been a good talk. As always, it's good talking to you. Good to see you guys. Yep. Great stuff Thank this you. time. Love Absolutely, you. yeah. It's good talking geek shit. I love it. Um, yeah, and sorry I, I didn't I, bring out more stuff, but, you know, I just, <clears throat> timing didn't work out. I wanted to get to the vault and, and pull out some, like, key books to show off, but. No, yeah, we'll have another know, geek. We'll, we'll do yeah. another comic book talk. Yeah, it's not a problem. We'll have, I, I think it would be kind of cool to have a, just a geek and tell show. Right, where we all have like ten to fifteen items that we maybe we grew up with. It's near and mm-hmm. dear to our hearts. That's like mm-hmm. completely geek shit, and we just show it off and tell the stories behind it. Yeah, 
I think that would be worth it, worth a shot, or even even if it's for masking geek that life to do that stuff. So, but, yeah, uh, unfortunately, yeah. with the with the comics, they're not quite like some of the toys and most of exactly. the, the Japanese books and gaming books that I can just reach over on a shelf and grab something. Yeah, those have to be have to be in a special place with a appropriate climate and no, it makes sense. Bells and whistles to keep them safe. So, all right. And then next Wednesday we have our D and D game, our AD and D game with Drew Bay as Dungeon Master, and awesome. Noble Brown will be joining us for that. Yay! Yeah, yep. you got to let me know what I need to prepare for that. So I well, it's not not so much me as Drew, but I'll, all I'll do is I'll get an email thread going, and he all can right, cool. he can inform you what you need. Right. We could definitely use another tank. Yeah, seriously. Good. <clears throat> Like it's a barbarian like or some Warcraft, shit. So. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, like mm-hmm. the, the uh, from the uh, Unearth Arcana. Get the mm-hmm. uh, the barbarian from that. There you go. So, um, any more questions in the chat before you go? We'll take one or two more. <clears throat> Going once. Going twice. Get those typing fingers moving. As I tape it, take a sip of this beer. Anything from our non YouTube viewer or who? Our non YouTube viewer. Uh, I don't remember what site he's watching it on or she was watching it on. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's uh, Twitch. Yeah, our Twitch viewer. Oh, uh, anyone on at the yeah? Our we do. I'm looking up at the stats here. Live viewers. We have six right now on YouTube and one on Twitch. What kind of beer? Uh, this is a local beer. Uh, well. Pennsylvania local. It's called it's Spellbound. And this is some shit that has cherry juice in it. Every once in a while, I like to try weird, esoteric shit. So, it's not bad. It's a, I'm not going to buy it again, but... I definitely taste a hint of cherry. Which mm. is one of my favorite uh, fruits. <clears throat> but that's not exactly a comic book related or geek related question, but we'll let it pass. Especially since it was bacon. Exactly. Bacon bacon has a pass on all questions. He can ask whatever he wants. Are you Wonder directing air traffic there, uh, Noble? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm explaining <laughs> to my son where he can find the blowtorch to go burn square. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That Send sounds like fun. On a bug hunt. We yeah, have to he's... when we come out there, we have to do that. <laughs> I have a, I have the I told you about the axe throwing board, right? Yo, you did. Yeah, we got to yeah. do that. Oh, that's fucking great. We, yeah, gotta, so, we have to go out I, and do an eBay and get a set of jarts. Yeah. No, I, I uh, we were we went to one of those places where they do the axe throwing, you know, mm-hmm. and Sarah Beth really liked it. She's like, I, you know, I might be good at this. Like, maybe I could do this like semi-professional. Like, all right. Anyway. So for her <laughs> birthday, I made the axe throwing board. I'm like, here's your birthday present. So awesome. Because you know, I'm that kind of romantic. That's well, yeah. Funny. As long as she's not throwing the axes at you, it's, it's oh, all that's, good, that's, right? That's how we keep each other honest, right? So Yeah, right. exactly. <clears throat> Seriously. That's cool. All right. All right, since we have no more questions, we're going to sign off. So, but, gentlemen, thank you for uh, hanging out tonight and talking. Always. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so, like I said, next Wednesday, Drew Bay DMing the AD&D game, Masculine Geek Game 2. Probably the following week after that, the end of March, will be Rollo's DM game. We'll keep you posted. Make sure you check out Twitter for updates. Make sure you sign up for alerts for what they're worth on YouTube. And uh, obviously, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, we broadcast. So twice a month are D&D games. So it's a 50-50 chance you have a uh, D&D game going off. So Mm -hmm. there you go. All right, TJ's not here, so I'll take us out. Uh, remember to keep that wine flowing. Keep that lead flying down range. Do not, do not take any fucking wood nickels. And again, keep the wine flowing. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your weeks. Bag and board those comics. That's right, you sons of bitches. <laughs>